Hey everybody, welcome to day 182 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. Today we're looking at Psalms chapters 55 through 62. Once again, some excellent things in here, highlights that I know you're going to like very much. In 1845, Elizabeth Prentice was 27 years old and that's the year she got married. And she was doing fine, but in 1852, her little four-year-old son, died of meningitis and that very same year her baby daughter also died suddenly so between january and may of that year when she's only 34 years old she lost two out of three of her children she said my faith has staggered under this new blow this was very hard for her and she wrote her prayer for that year and her prayer for that year was this one child in two green graves are mine This is God's gift to me. A bleeding, fainting, broken heart. This is my gift to thee. But as she was sorting through all of this, she realized that the Lord was still good. And here's what she said. My heart sides with God in everything. And my conception of his character is such a beautiful one that I feel he cannot err. So he thought, she thought, God is still wonderful. I don't understand what's going on, but I just don't think he can err. And I think he is so beautiful and so wonderful that I just trust him. I side with God. And then she wrote the hymn. And maybe you know this hymn, More Love, O Christ, to Thee. And here's what she said in her hymn. Once earthly joy I craved, sought peace and rest. Now thee alone I seek give what is best. This all my prayer shall be, more love, O Christ, to thee, more love to thee, more love to thee. Today we're going to read such a precious psalm, and it's going to talk about the Lord's sympathy, uh, his tender sympathy in all of our sufferings so that he actually collects our tears as a memorial. So again, this is Psalms chapter 55, verse 1 in the King James Version of the Bible with updated vocabulary. Psalms 55, to the chief musician on Neganoth, Maskil, a psalm of David. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sorely pained within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me and horror has overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove for then I would fly away and be at rest. See, then I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Selah. I would hurry my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it upon the walls of it. Evil also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst of it. Deceit and guile do not depart from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he who hated me, who did magnify himself against me, because then I would have hidden myself from him. But it was you, a man, my equal, my guide, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them and let them go down alive into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. He has delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he who abides of old, Selah, because They have no changes, therefore they do not fear God. He has put forth his hands against such as are at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never allow the righteous to be moved. But you, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. Chapter 56. To the chief musician, upon Jonath Elam Rekogim, Miktam of David, when the Philistines took him in Gath. 
Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresses me. My enemies would daily swallow me up, for they are many that fight against me, O Most High. What time I am afraid, I will trust in you. O God, I will praise his word in God. I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. Every day they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In your anger cast down the people, O God. You count my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? When I cry to you, then my enemies shall turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do to me. Your vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto you, for you have delivered my soul from death. Will you not deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Chapter 57. To the chief musician, Altasketh, Mictam of David, when he fled from Saul in the cave. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusts in you. Yes, in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities are past. I will cry unto God, most high unto God, who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him who would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among those who are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me in the midst of which they have fallen themselves. Selah. My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed, I will sing and give praise. Wake up, my glory, awaken, psaltery and harp, I myself will awaken early. I will praise you, O Lord, among the people, I will sing unto you among the nations, for your mercy is great unto the heavens, and your truth unto the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let your glory be above all the earth. Chapter 58. To the chief musician, Altasketh, Miktam of David, do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O sons of men? Yes, in heart you work wickedness. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stops her ear, which will not listen to the voice of charmers charming ever so wisely. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. When he bends his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as if cut in pieces, as a snail which melts. Let every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of a woman that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Truly there is a reward for the righteous. Truly he is a God who judges in the earth. Chapter 59. To the chief musician, Altasketh, Miktam of David, when Saul sent, and they watched the house to kill him. Deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from the bloody men. For see, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awaken to help me, and behold. You therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awaken to visit all the Gentiles. Do not be merciful to any wicked transgressors. Selah. They return at evening. They make a noise like a dog and go around the city. See, they belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. For who, they say, hears. But you, O Lord, shall laugh at them. You shall have all the 
Gentiles in derision. Because of his strength, I will weigh upon you, for God is my defense. The God of my mercy shall meet me. God shall let me see my desire upon my enemies. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips. Let them even be taken in their pride and for cursing and lying which they speak. Consume them in your anger. Consume them that they may not be and let them know that God rules in Jacob unto the ends of the earth, Selah. And at evening, let them return and let them make a noise like a dog and go around the city. Let them wander up and down for food and growl if they are not satisfied. But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning, for you've been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto you, O my strength, I will sing, for God is my defense and the God of my mercy. Chapter 60. To the chief musician... Upon Shushan Eduth, uh, Miktam of David, to teach, when he strove with Aram Neharaim and with Aram Zobah, when Joab returned and struck of Edom in the Valley of Salt, 12,000. O God, you have cast us off. You have scattered us. You have been displeased. O turn yourself to us again. You have made the earth to tremble. You have broken it. Heal the gaps of it, for it shakes. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us to drink the wine of astonishment. You have given a banner to those who fear you, that it may be displayed because of the truth, Selah. That your beloved may be delivered, save with your right hand and hear me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom, I will cast out my shoe. Philistia, triumph because of me. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Will you not, O God, who had cut us off, and you, O God, who did not go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for worthless is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is who shall tread down our enemies. Chapter 61. To the chief musician upon Neganah, a psalm of David. Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me and a strong tower from my enemy. I will remain in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the cover of your wings, Selah. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So I will sing praise unto your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Chapter 62. To the chief musician, to Jeduthun, a psalm of David. Truly my soul waits upon God, from him my salvation comes. He only is my rock and my salvation, he is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you imagine evil against a man? You shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall you shall be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. My soul weigh only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God, my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than nothing. Do not trust in oppression and become worthless in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice, I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Also, unto you, O Lord, belongs mercy, for you render to every man according to his work. And that concludes Psalm chapter 62. In this section of scripture, we start out with chapter 55, which was a lament and imprecatory psalm of David. 
The highlights here have to do with betrayal, and the betrayal theme is because David was betrayed by the Ziphites, but you also see similarity to how the Lord was betrayed by Judas. So once again, double fulfillment, layers of fulfillment, right? In chapter 55, verse 22, we love this. It says, cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. And you think, well, what does it mean to cast your burden on the Lord? How precisely does one cast his burden? What, what weighs him down? How does he get rid of it? How does he cast it on the Lord. And this in Scripture always has the idea of focus. You must not focus on the things that threaten you and cause anxiety and disappointment and depression. Don't focus on those things. Instead, focus on God's super genius and His super love. You let that be your focus and you are moving the burden from your abilities, uh, your fears, onto God's a wonderful ability and his fearlessness. And so you roll that burden onto God by your focus. And remember that. In chapter 56, we have a lament psalm of David. And the highlight here is from chapter 56, verse 8. Here David says, and this is so sweet, isn't it? Put my tears in your bottle, in your book. Are they not written? Uh, and this is so great. Archaeologists have actually found small bottles, little clay bottles, uh, for tears at grave sites. And so the idea was that um, a loved one would collect the tears and put them in this little clay bottle and leave it at the grave site so that people would know that this person was loved. And here, David has the idea of God collecting your tears. Uh, to show that he knows, he cares, he is not aloof, he, he's not one who's too busy to bother with you. He's act actually collecting your tears in some heavenly way, in some heavenly archive, and he's writing it down in his record book. And that's so great. You know, if you get a bottle of eye drops, and there's one called No Tears, right? If you get a bottle of eye drops, there's something like half an ounce of... Um, eye drops in a little bottle of eye drops that you can fit in the palm of your hand. All right, well, that little half bottle of no tears is like this. The Lord has collected a bottle of your tears. Uh, many of those eye drops have about half an ounce. That would be about 150 human tears, half an ounce. Well, I guess some of you could fill quite a few of those bottles with your tears, huh? But don't you just worry about it. The Lord has been collecting those. He does care. And when you go to heaven someday and you look at the archives, he'll show you that he has tangible evidence that he did care. And he was collecting those tears. And he noticed and it mattered to him. And it's in the heavenly record forever. God cares. And I love that. In chapter 57, we have a lament psalm of David. In chapter 58, a lament and imprecatory psalm of David. In chapter 59, a lament and an aggressive imprecatory psalm of David. Chapter 59 has this highlight in verse 10, where David says, The God of my, my mercy shall come to me. And I love that. Uh, in spite of all that's going on that's so bad, David says, The God of my mercy is going to come to me. And, and every word, is it interesting that he says, the God of my mercy, the God of my mercy, the God of, of the mercy that comes to me. It's like my own personal possession. It's, it's the mercy that is mine. The God of my mercy shall come to me. He'll meet me. I'm going to be okay. And I do love that. In chapter 60, we have a national lament psalm, and it's a teaching psalm, and it's a messianic prophetic psalm. And you see in chapter 60, verse 12, it says, through God we shall do valiantly. I love that. That's, that's the highlight in my mind. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is who shall tread down our enemies. And by the way, that's the same verbiage that we find in chapter 108, verse 13. Through God we shall do valiantly. We're going to do okay. We're going to be courageous and bold because God is going to trample our enemies for us and through us and with us in partnership with us. And we have to love that. Chapter 61. We have a royal and lament psalm. Remember, a royal psalm is any psalm that talks about a king. And every royal psalm is actually a messianic psalm as well. But we have a royal and a lament psalm. In chapter 61, the highlight is in verse 2, I think, where David says, When my heart is overwhelmed, like a person who's drowning overwhelmed with water, or more likely in David's case, overwhelmed by the enemies. There are too many. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock 
that is higher than I. When all of these people are upon me, put me up on a mountaintop where I'm looking down. And of course, whoever has the higher position has the advantage in warfare. And so I just love that. When I'm just totally overwhelmed, Lord, put me in a high place. Uh, get me away from the melee, away from the, the mayhem. And, and the Lord does that. In chapter 62, you have a trust psalm of David. And the highlight in my mind is verse 10, where it says, if riches increase, do not set your heart upon them. Don't be a person who just loves wealth. If your riches increase, hold them with an open hand. If they go away, it's okay with you. Don't set your heart on them. Just hold them with an open hand. And so uh, we have this wonderful advice about money. All right, but we have to just pick one great life lesson today from our scripture reading. What should it be? I want to go back to chapter 56, verse 8. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not written in your book? The heavenly archives. We too easily imagine that God is too busy to bother with us and our little heartaches. He's just not going to care. But that's wrong. God is actually so invested in our sorrows, in our tears, that he records them forever in the archives of heaven. And he keeps some sort of tangible evidence. When you go there, I don't know if it's going to be a little clay bottle of tears, but when you go there, you'll see the evidence. You'll say, yeah, that is what the Bible is talking about. The Lord has a tangible evidence of my sorrows in life. He did care. He was watching all along. And proof is right here in the archives of heaven that he always did care and he always did watch. So what should be our prayer? How about a prayer of gratitude today? Because when we were hurting, God was noticing and God was caring and he was orchestrating everything for good. What's the proof? It's in the archives of heaven. So I hope you'll pray in your heart as I pray out loud, okay? Father God, we do want to express thanks today. We want to tell you how much it matters to us that you care. You care so much that you are keeping a heavenly record of the things that have broken our hearts. You have cared for us, and we love you so much for that, Lord, and we thank you for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, okay. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today for day 182 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast, and I sure hope I get to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.